Hey guys, today I'm going to show you five useful tips and tricks for Affinity Designer version 2. So let's get started. Here I am in Affinity Designer. As you can see, the interface and all of those little details tell us this is version 2, recently released in November. Let's scroll down to the first artboard. And my first tip is to use a x ray mode. Usually, when I plan to merge shapes, put shapes together using this brand new shape builder tool, I tend to avoid using fill color, just outline, just stroke. But sometimes you already draw some shapes full of colors and then you need to put them together. Or maybe you just cannot see there are so many details in your project that you cannot see where is what. So X-ray mode is really helpful. It's a new addition to this version too. In the past, we got something called outline mode that kind of kill colors. We can only see outlines, but X-ray mode is a little bit different. And in my opinion, better. Take a look. I will go up here to view so I can check different view modes. And there's a group called wireframe. Inside that we got X-ray and outline. So the outline is nothing new that was in version one, but the X-ray is a brand new addition. So let's turn it on. As you can see in this mode, it's not only outline, but we also can see that faded color. So <coughs> as you can see in this mode, it's not only about outlines, but we also can see the fill color. It's semi-transparent, faded away, so you can see through it, but it gives you idea what is the original color. So I think it's really good mode if you got multiple shapes intersecting, overlapping, and then you plan to use some kind of shape building tools to deal with them. So that's X-ray mode. Tip number one. Let's move to the second artboard. I will go back from the X-ray to a standard vector view. All right. And the tip number two is tables from Affinity Publisher. So if you want to add a table, looking at the tool section in the left, no table tool. You will Google this app. Is there a table tool in Affinity Designer? They will say no. But there's a way to put a proper table in Affinity Designer. Take a look. That's not a combination of shapes, or squares. I click on the object. Please notice the object on this layer section on the right side. Type of object is table. Double click on it. I can see columns and rows. And I got table control in my context toolbar at the top. So how can I get a table in Affinity Designer? Right now, in version 2.0, you need to have Affinity Publisher as well. Simply add a table to publish a document, and then we'll be able to copy and paste this in the designer, and you will keep all the properties of the object. So that's kind of hinting that they're going to add table tool in designer in the future, because it's already working here. If you copy your table from publisher to designer, you will get a proper table. And this is not a rasterized or vectorized object. It's a table object. So we can modify this as we could in publisher. So you can copy your tables from Affinity Publisher. That's a tip number two. Tip number three, customize. Customize your tool panel, customize your toolbar. Take a look. You want to have this two rows toolbar or you want your zoom tool back here, you can do it instead of complaining <laughs> on Facebook. We can just customize our stuff. So let's try it out. All right. In the view section, we can see that two options, customize tools and customize toolbar. So if I customize toolbar, I will be changing the stuff up here at the top. All right. For designer, I kind of like the default, but for, I can get rid of our range. I don't need that. All right. But for, let's say for Affinity Photo, I very often add those Boolean operation geometric controls 
All right, so take a look. There are so many other features you can put in your toolbar, depends on the stuff you need for your workflow. So keep that in mind. You can make some custom changes here in the toolbar. All right, and the more important is we can also make custom changes in the tools itself. So customize tools. And now we can drag and drop any tool from this list. So we can have separate spaces for certain shapes. There are a few little tools that are not by default on the list. And there's also a zoom tool as separate addition. So there are multiple people on day one when they release this Affinity Designer that they cannot see the zoom tool on the list. We will back to that. <laughs> but take a look. You can just drag this whatever you feel like it and you got zoom tool now you can put separators between different groups of tools you can even change the number of columns you can keep your tools in two columns like this so you can customize your tools don't be afraid of that if you mess up something you can always click reset okay so keep in mind you can customize your tools not a problem tip Number four is erase blending mode. So there's a special blending mode that can cut the hole to other objects. You could say, take a look on this rectangle. There's a star, let's move it up here and change the blend mode to normal. By default, this star is just red. But if I change the blend mode from normal to erase, it will be erasing everything below so we can see this white backdrop but it's not erasing only the one object below but both so if you just want to erase one object you need to drop this star on that object and now this star is erasing this part of the object here so i can see what's below so that's not a geometric operation that's just a blend mode called erase in the layer section here all right, that was tip number four. You can use erase mode to create holes in objects. And the last tip for today is about zooming because there are many <laughs> comments about that. So as I already show, you can put back a normal zoom tool on your list. By default in version two, it's hidden here at the bottom. I'm not a big fan of zoom tool because it's required you to switch tools. I don't wanna do that when I'm, for example, using pen tool, I don't want to switch to zoom. I just want to zoom in and out. How we can do that? One way to doing this is to use a shortcut. I like to use keyboard shortcut command minus to zoom out, command plus to zoom in. It's control on Windows, by the way. So control minus, control plus. That's how I like to do that. There are some people that love to do it with scroll wheel. So if you want to scroll wheel, by default, you're just moving up and down. But if you press option on Mac, you will be zooming out and zooming in using your scroll wheel. This will be alt on Windows computer. So if you hold the alt or option, you can scroll in and out with your wheel and take a look. We are sc scrolling to the cursor. So if my cursor orbiting here, I'm here. If my cursor is here, I will zoom here. So that's really handy. So you can zoom in and out without need for this tool. It's much better to use some kind of shortcut, whatever it's command plus, command minus, or scroll wheel, that's much faster and you don't need to switch between tools all the time. So please try to use zooming by shortcuts. On iPad, it's really easy with gestures, but on desktop, try to use this option plus scroll wheel or command plus and minus to zoom in out. So we talk about how to zoom we talk about how to erase part of the object using the erase blending mode. I mentioned that you can customize your tools. You can paste, copy and paste your tables from Affinity Publisher right now without any troubles. They will be still as a table object. And you can use X-ray mode if you've got multiple overlapping shapes. All right, those are my five tips and tricks for Affinity Designer version two. Keep in mind, I did a very similar video recently talking about five universal tips and tricks. So I mentioned five tips that will work across the, across the suite. So you can use them in designer, photo and publisher. So please check that out because they're really good 
tips and also the universal so you can use them across that so if you didn't see that video last week check it out check out those universal tips and tricks and i will see you in the next tutorial bye